You know this guy, right? Jackson Pollock. Jackson Pollock, that's right, the drip painter. Okay, he let his mind go blank and his hand go where it wanted. Not deliberate, not random, someplace in between. In 1948, the art critic Robert Coates, in an article for The New Yorker, described Jackson Pollock's work as mere unorganized explosions of random energy, and therefore meaningless. Is Pollock's work really unintelligible? Is there really nothing to be understood from it, or was Pollock just another misunderstood artist? Pollock's abstract expressionist work was unorganized and explosive. He said it himself, when I'm in my painting, I'm not aware of what I'm doing. That does not mean the work lacks in meaning or importance. After all, he did practice action painting, a branch of the abstract expressionist movement which is more immediate and aggressive as opposed to, for example, color field painting, a more subtle and peaceful approach to abstract expressionism. Pollock was originally part of the regionalist art movement which aimed at depicting the American rural lifestyle. This makes sense considering the fact that Pollock was born in Cody, Wyoming and grew up in Arizona and California. In 1929, he moves to New York City to study at the Art Students League of New York under the great American regionalist painter Thomas Hart Benton. Pollock then becomes greatly influenced by Cubism. In 1939, he attends Picasso 40 Years of His Art, an exhibition which took place at the Museum of Modern Art in New York City, where he sees Picasso's great masterpiece, Guernica, which we have made a video about. This opened Pollock's eyes to the tremendous power of European modern art, which was much more politically engaged and expressive than his past regionalist affiliations. It's in the 1940s that Jackson Pollock develops the style we now know him for. He started to use a painting method known as automatism. Automatism in physiology is described as movements unconsciously set in motion by the brain, such as breathing. The psychoanalysis Sigmund Freud used it to make his patients draw and was then able to analyze these drawings to explore their subconscious. The French poet André Breton, the father of the surrealist movement, was one of the founders of automatic writing. He would write as fast as possible to stop himself from making any conscious decisions during the creation process. The idea is to bring out the purest form of creativity by ignoring cultural and historical influences. With that being said, when we look at autumn rhythm, we now understand that Pollock did not preconceive the end result. Each line, each splatter comes from within. Not deliberate, not random, but something in between. It allows us to take a deeper look inside the artist's state of mind. Let's not forget Pollock's revolutionary ways of painting. He would place a very large canvas on the floor to then rapidly paint by walking around it and sometimes on it, which explains why we can find footsteps and cigarette ashes on some of his work. He would whip, flick, and throw paint at the canvas, sometimes even pouring it directly from the bucket. He would dip both ends of his brush in the paint to then let it rain down on the canvas. Different tools were used for this. Sticks, knives, and even turkey basters. This technique is known as drip painting. It was introduced by Hans Hoffmann, but popularized by Pollock. The title Autumn Rhythm helps us understand that we are looking at the chaotic mayhem of leaves and branches drifting in the wind as temperature is slowly dropping. The tones of beige remind us of trees in fall when they're almost entirely naked. The aggressive black lines could be branches chaotically dancing in the wind, the wind that could itself be portrayed by white paint. Eventually, Pollock will stop titling his paintings and will start numerating them, leaving the interpretation to the viewers. Coates does have a point. Pollock's work is in fact an unorganized explosion of random energy, but that does not make it meaningless. He gives us the opportunity of traveling through his subconscious. Every element in the painting 
is the product of a feeling or an impulsion, not an idea. He gives us, the audience, one of the rarest and purest form of creativity, the one the artist himself has no control over. We'd like to thank our supporters on Patreon. If you'd like to become a patron, check us out on patreon.com forward slash the canvas.